Welcome to Industries in Chemical Engineering, a series of short videos intended to expose sophomore chemical engineers to the variety of career options available within chemical engineering. I'm your host, Dr. Vijay Toko, from the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Florida. Just a reminder, all information presented here comes from my own experiences, discussion with engineers in these fields, and my own curiosity. You should expect your experiences in these fields to vary considerably. This is Industries in Chemical Engineering. Episode 8, Pulp and Paper. This industry is very popular for UF chemical engineers, due in part to the proximity of a few paper mills to Gainesville. For example, there is a West Rock Mill located in Fernandina Beach and a Georgia Pacific Mill in Palatka. Other paper companies include the giant International Paper and the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company. That last one is just a joke, just in case any of you have never watched The Office. Dunder Mifflin is the fictional company, so please don't go looking for them at the Career Showcase. So when I say paper, what's the first thing that your mind thinks of? For me, it's 8.5 by 11 computer paper, or note cards, or notebook paper. But honestly, in the last few years, I've noticed a dramatic reduction in the amount of paper I use, which is a good thing for the environment. With technology constantly improving, you can make the argument that this industry is slowly dying and not worth considering as an exciting future career. Except that this assumption is not true. Computer and notebook paper is only a portion of this alive and well industry. Most shopping I do nowadays is on Amazon, and when my order arrives at my front door, it's in a corrugated shipping box made out of paper. FYI, the colloquial term cardboard box is not correct, and if you call a corrugated container cardboard, you will get corrected in the pulp and paper industry. The corrugations give this box structural integrity, and it protects the contents of the box from getting damaged. Other familiar pulp and paper industry products that probably won't be replaced anytime soon are toilet paper, paper towel, diaper absorbent, and actual cardboard boxes used for food boxes like Pop-Tarts and cereal. Even people with the most basic understanding of paper know that the raw source material is woody biomass, most commonly trees. But most people haven't the slightest clue of how these rigid logs can be transformed into soft and flexible paper products. Looking at the two images side by side, it's hard to imagine that these come from the same source material. As it turns out, there's a huge molecule called lignin that gives woody plants their structure. Therefore, one of the first parts of the paper making process is to debark the logs chop them into chips, and digest the lignin. This is achieved by mixing it with a strongly basic solution called white liquor, which is a mixture of sodium hydroxide and sodium sulfide. To me, the coolest part about many paper mills is that they find a use for their waste material. I'm skipping a few steps in the process, but after digestion, the spent white liquor is called black liquor, which can then be burned and used for energy in the rest of the mill thereby reducing operating costs and reducing the waste generated by the process as well. After lignin removal, the remaining pulp is still brown in color, so the next part is a series of cooking, bleaching, washing, and refining steps to turn it white. Finally, it is pressed and dried into paper in enormous rolls like this. The photos here kind of show how large the rolls are, but having seen them in real life, they don't do it justice. Each one of these rolls weighs about 60,000 pounds and is made every 30 minutes. This infographic resembles a process flow diagram and summarizes the whole process. You should pause the video here to read it in more detail if you're interested. To close this episode out, I wanted to comment briefly on the magnitude of these paper mills. These are satellite images from Google Maps to show the city of Fernandina Beach. The West Rock Mill is up in the northwest corner, and you can see how vast it is in relation to the surrounding city. Zooming in a bit shows how many process units are involved, and also how large these process units are. If you squint hard enough, you can just barely make out some of the cars in the photo that are quite small in relation to the equipment. Here's another photo from Google Maps of the mill from the Amelia River. Finally, I'd like to share some photos, courtesy of Craig Singizer, who was my student in MEB in fall 2019. He was on co-op at West Rock and sent me these photos of some equipment that he worked with. On the left is a concentric heat exchanger, and on the right is a batch digester. That concludes this episode. Thanks for watching.